Welcome everybody. I'm Paul Bridges, National Chair of Communities in Bloom, and I'm delighted to have everyone back for our next uh, edition of our summer 2021 virtual program. We're very lucky today to, as we go through our second seminar, we're gonna be learning more about uh, preparing for the judges and the judges tour. In August, we'll be hosting our last summer webinar and we hope you can participate then as well. And we'd like to thank all of our Communities in Bloom sponsors and partners at this time for their contribution towards our 2021 virtual edition. Uh, their support and support of our registered communities such as yourselves is truly appreciated. Uh, without everyone here, uh, we wouldn't be able to make this program the success that it has always been and will continue to be as we continue to work together. We have uh, many different, uh, I think we have seven countries online today, as well as a number of states and provinces. So welcome uh, across the globe. And today I'd like to welcome one of our CIB judges, Bob Iveson from the UK. And Bob's going to share his insights into what goes into a well-crafted CIB judges visit. So your community can receive maximum benefit uh, from your participation in the CIB program. Being prepared is key to offering the best judges tour possible. As we go through today, please feel free to ask your questions in the question and answer feature. Uh, and you can do that. Uh, we'll do our best to address them all as we go through. You can find that feature at the bottom of your screen. And if it's disappeared, you just need to hover your mouse over the bottom center screen and it should pop up again. And said so between uh, keep uh, checking in the chat sections, we'll answer some uh, in text. We'll answer some live as we go through today. And now today I'd like to introduce uh, our speaker, Bob Iveson. I've got to know Bob a little bit over the last two years, and I know he's got a wealth of knowledge with a career in horticulture spanning over 50 years. And in that time, he's gained a vast amount of experience and knowledge. He is happy uh, to share his knowledge uh, through the CIB program. And Bob started his career with the Royal Parks London, following by study at the Royal Botanic Gardens Q. He then worked for various local authorities in and around London, culminating as the head of service position for the London uh, Borough of Enfield. These last 15 years, he formed his own company, providing strategic and management support to park services and other government agencies. Uh, although retired, he's still active and involved in many horticulture related programs. Bob will be focusing on landscapes today. And Bob, thanks so much for taking the time to spend the, some time with us um, today, this evening. Okay, thank you very much, Paul, and uh, welcome everybody to uh, this uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, just looking at the list of participants we've got here, it's uh, a little bit overwhelming. I think we've got uh, 80 participants uh, with seven countries around the world. So uh, welcome everybody, and uh, whether it's good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, uh, welcome. Right, if I can now share my screen, hopefully we can run on with the program. Okay, here we go. All right, communities in bloom. The uh, the judges are coming. So here we are. Here's the introduction. So what? First of all, I mean, what is a judging tour? Um, well, let's first of all say that it is not a test. This is uh, really it's going to be an opportunity for you to showcase your community and all the good work that you've been doing over this last twelve months or more. Um, and making sure that your community can grow and develop uh, into the future. So, and it's also an opportunity for you to exchange ideas. The judges that are coming to see you are well experienced and well versed in this program. And so really take the opportunity to talk to them, listen to them, what they have to say, the suggestions that they make as they're traveling around, and don't afraid, be afraid to ask questions. So typically there will be two judges uh, coming to see you um, and evaluate. They're not uh, judging, uh, perhaps two judges is, is too strong a word. They're gonna be uh, assessing you and really evaluating what you've done over the last uh, 12 months. Now, you might think judges are two characters coming along that are going to, uh, really have a good time and wonder what on earth is going on. But I think what I'd like to think is that two characters that are going to turn up are going to be there to help and support and uh, help you put things right. Uh, Batman and Robin might be a little bit too strong, 
but I'm the one in gray that you can see on the screen there. So while on the evaluation tour, um, they will also give the opportunity to speak to the media and participate uh, in other social media activities. Um, either in front of camera, as we see here, or it could be a radio interview or just purely uh, a reporter asking questions and, and reporting what's going on. But they are there to help and support you in what you're doing over uh, that judging time. So formulating the tour, what you need to be thinking about is initially is really study that evaluation grid that you will have received. There's lots of context there that you need to really think about and really understand how you're going to get across to the judges uh, what you've been up to. You've got to ensure that all the criteria that are on that uh, judging grid are actually being met. And in fact, the judges will visit to assess you. You need to identify the projects and sites and set an itinerary. Be clear what it is you're wanting to show the judges. You need to plan the tour properly. Um, the timeframes, the fallback route, meals, comfort breaks, uh, that all needs to be accounted for. And if you need to show all the different aspects, and many of you have got lots to see, if you're gonna ensure that the judges see all of those things, you make sure that the timescales are right to do that. Inevitably, you might come across some bad weather. Plan for that too. Uh, it could be either just providing umbrellas to walk around in the rain, or it could be actually, if it's so bad, is ensuring that there's an indoor activity that can be assessed. You've got to ensure that every, every minute counts. Determine who should accompany the judges and, what they and who they should see on the route. Um, and Importantly, rehearse, rehearse, and rehearse. Uh, you can never be too well prepared for a judge's tour. You will need to prepare your profile documentation and the itinerary, because that needs to be provided to the judges in advance anyway. You need to check with CIBHQ, and uh, we have Sonia on the line today, um, or the judges directly about if there's any special needs they might have. Uh, and that needs to be accounted for within the tour itinerary. And as I say, make sure every minute counts. You can never be too prepared. And again, rehearse, rehearse and rehearse. Uh, it's gonna be so important. You've gotta be prepared for every eventuality because inevitably something will happen which is gonna impact on your itinerary. And if you've been rehearsing and preparing for that, you'd be able to take those elements in your stride. So pre-tour, so before the judges arrive, there are two items that need to be dealt with. First one, as I say, is the copy of the profile book. And now that could be a nice big glossy uh, item that uh, is gonna be a pleasure to read uh, and keep on the bookshelf at home. Or it could be a simple uh, produced on your PC at home um, which is available to the judges. It's the content which counts, not the presentation. And then the second item is a tentative itinerary of the tour. The judges will need to know where it is they intend to go because they want to do some pre-planning themselves, looking at what sort of thing they're going to be seeing, where they're going to be seeing it, and how long they're going to be seeing it. Um, if that's on an itinerary up front, it makes the judge's job so much easier. Now, importantly, is the identification of the tour transportation. You need to ensure that the judges can get from place to place uh, safely, and also that they can see what it is that you're trying to show them. Also, that they don't want to be overwhelmed with a whole battery of people asking questions, making suggestions, look at this, look at that, have you seen this, I've got something else to show you. A vehicle like this is ideal. Um, it allows for your driver, the judge's uh, tour guide, and then the two judges themselves. Uh, 
it's going to get around, it's going to get into places, and you're going to be able to make, make sure the job is done properly. Now, that's, as we've just shown you, is a, an ideal sort of vehicle, but it depends on the terrain and what it is you're going to be showing us. Here is a case in Bruges where we actually did the judging tour partially in a boat uh, because there are so many canals within Bruges that transportation is going to be on the water. So therefore, make use of the boat. And also it gives you an opportunity to see some of the architecture and some of the uh, environmental uh, elements that much better and that much closer. Now I draw the line at possibly horseback. Um, <laughs> but as it turned out, this wasn't for us. This was just a, a, a passing farmer. Um, but we did end up in a, in a little buggy like that. If you're going to be traveling across golf courses, some pretty rough terrain, then a small little uh, four wheel buggy like this is ideal. Uh, judges sitting on the back with the tour guide. Uh, a little bit of an uh, additional, uh, I was going to say horsepower, but goat power in this case. Um, that, that didn't accompany us on this particular tour. But you can see the, the actual buggy itself has got a lab, uh, uh, label on the front. Uh, Welcome to the Kamloops uh, CIB judges. Um, promotion is a big element uh, of a judging tour, not just for the judges, but for the community themselves. Take advantage of that. Depending on where you are and what they're trying to show you, this is a similar uh, a, a, a bit of transportation, which would be appropriate. Um, so why not take advantage? Don't get bogged down in the fact that it's got to be a four wheel drive, uh, super duper SUV. Uh, depends what you're wanting to show. And if you're in logging country, then why not take a trip in a, a logging truck? Uh, this one over in Prince George, um, this was purely for show, I have to say, but we did have a ride in the, and it was terrific. But this is what goes on in Prince George, logging. So therefore they were displaying their equipment that they used to do that particular element of work. If you want to really push the boat out, again, depending on where you are and what the terrain is like, use an helicopter might be a way of doing it. I'm not suggesting that everybody should do that. Uh, it just depends on what you've got, what resources are available to you. It was a great uh, opportunity to see the um, areas around uh, this one, I think it was in Chatham, Kent. Um, it was a good opportunity to be able to see the terrain that you wouldn't normally see from uh, ground level. Now, if um, you can, it's always helpful that if the tour is mapped out, and you present that listing to the judges. And if you can accompany that with the names of people that you're going to be seeing and who are going to be making presentations, then it makes the judge's job that much simpler. So uh, if you can do it, I would. Now, it was saying here, the main tour guide doesn't need to be an expert in everything. Uh, what they need to be is a good communicator. Uh, and if you've got someone who can do that, who has worked with you to develop the program, then they can do that. What they're going to be taking you then to is the people who are the experts in that particular element of, uh, of the program. So it's a, someone who's a good communicator and uh, is able to point out and draw in a good chairman effectively in what you're doing. Now, two days, if it's a two day tour, it's a long time for a judge and it's also a long time for your tour guide. Share the load. If you have someone who can take up, say, the, the morning of the first day and then someone who can do the afternoon of that first day and then continue on if it's a two day tour into the second day with someone else, it helps, keeps everything fresh and people just don't get worn out. Important element is getting a whipper in because you need to keep on track and on time and you need to keep people together. It's amazing, it's like herding cats. Uh, if you get someone wandering off and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody, uh, taking photographs of particular elements, I see something, I'll go and take a photograph or I want to go and talk to someone else. Um, you wander off and before you know it, you're off your timetable. 
So someone who's there tracking time and where you are within the program is vital. Now, we've shown the transportation that you've got, but it doesn't have to be motorized at all. Walking tours uh, works just as well, uh, but equally, why not bicycles? Um, this one is in Vancouver. So uh, uh, vast cycle network in Vancouver and lots to see from cycles. So take advantage of that. It doesn't have to be motorized vehicles. It doesn't have to be walking it, or even horseback. It could be, a could be a cycle. Now, the tour should make sure you cover all the evaluation categories. Now, just to be clear what they are again, uh, hopefully they are uh, burnt into your mind, but you, here they are again. It's community appearance is your first element, environmental action, heritage conservation, urban forestry, landscape, and floral displays. Now you've got the grid, you've had the grid, so you can work your way through that and you can see where the points are allocated. It might be worth mentioning at this point that those categories <clears throat> are gonna be updated slightly uh, in forthcoming editions. Uh, essentially it's the same, but it's just being updated and made more relevant to what's going on in the communities today. But essentially it's those uh, six elements and work on that. Okay, so typical arrangements once the judges arrived on site. Um, first of all, they need to be met somewhere. It could be usually the airport, local airport, or it could be the rail station or even the bus station. Um, it's wherever it is, but there will be a local meeting point. And then you need to take them through to uh, wherever it is they're gonna be staying for those uh, day or two they're gonna be with you. Got to check in, make sure everything's comfortable and prepared for them. Now, it could be a simple, straightforward, simple uh, hotel room such as that. Or there again, it could be uh, actually the judge's accommodation. This is, happens to be in Northampton in uh, the UK. This is the judge's accommodation for the local county court where the judge stays whilst he's presiding. Uh, this was built in uh, 1675, I think it was. So again, it wasn't just the fact it was uh, accommodation for the judges sustaining, but it was also an element within the cultural heritage aspect of what they were trying to show us. You could take advantage of the fact that once the judge had been picked up from the airport or wherever, that the drive from that locate, that pickup point to the hotel is actually going to be part of an orientation process. Uh, it's useful to know the judges will have checked uh, using the, the likes of Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever platform you might have, but seeing it on the ground and just a quick tour from the hotel, from the airport to the hotel is always going to be a useful little element to add in. And again, it's taking advantage, every minute counts of the time the judges are with you. Now in the first evening, uh, it depending on what the judges have been doing, it could be that a nice relaxing evening is going to be uh, worthwhile. However, I'm sure members of your committee will be dying and itching to start putting across to the judges the benefits that's going of, the, of what the activities are of a particular community. So dinner that first evening is an opportunity to start getting those messages across. Judges are quite prepared for that. And if you wanna take advantage of it, uh, I would do so. Following morning, um, now the breakfast at the hotel combined with a briefing tour from the, from the committee itself, a working breakfast is quite acceptable. Um, again, it gives you the opportunity to start getting the messages across to the judges whilst they're uh, engaged in, in breakfast. But normally, start at the beginning of the day, typically about eight o'clock or thereabouts, um, and usually it's a meeting with the mayor and heads of department to put across the background and start preparing the judges for what they're about to see. Now,
Now, I'm not suggesting that that's the typical uh, reception that judges would receive. It was very nice and very enjoyable and certainly showed the fact that the whole of the city staff were actually involved and engaged in the program. Um, it was certainly a, a surprise, uh, but nevertheless, it certainly made an impression and it certainly made the rest of the tour more interesting and exciting because you knew that everybody was behind the program. But normally and typically what you might have is a meeting with the mayor and heads of department and talking about the program and talking about their efforts over the last 12 months. Uh, this is Sion Book in, in Seoul in South Korea. Um, and there we are because of the language um, issues, we actually have an interpreter as well. So it doesn't matter uh, what the language, and I know we have some overseas uh, guests today, so it doesn't matter what the language is, as long as there is an interpreter there to help us understand what's going on. So this is a typical arrangement, breakfast after breakfast, a coffee, a uh, chat, the mayor's telling us all that's been going on and the heads of department using a presentation format to, uh, to show us what's happening. As we're going around, we obviously will be stops uh, and that's where the knowledgeable individuals will be. They're the ones that give us the detail of what the program is, is about, what the projects are about and what you've achieved to date and what your program for future development is going to be. Very important. You also have very skilled, knowledgeable and dedicated staff. Uh, uh, and in this case, uh, in Kamloops, um, Gay there is probably the driving force behind uh, what was Kamloops in Bloom at, at, at that day. Um, taking a bit of time out because it's, it, it can be a tough time. It's a very exhausting time. We want to try and make light of what's going on. And equally from single units like the, of, of uh, entertainment, you get large community events like this. All the different communities sections are involved, they're participating. In this case, it's a little picnic, um, but they're all there showcasing what they've been up to. Uh, a, a joy to uh, behold. Now again, taking every opportunity and lunchtime is no exception, that if you get various community organizations to come, to, to come together, and make short presentations, always very useful, very helpful. Over lunch, so it could be as uh, straightforward as this, sitting down at a table and just people talking uh, to you and expressing all their views, or we could get something a little bit more formal um, with uh, uh, a dinner being prepared, lunch being prepared, and we don't mind what guests come along. In this case, it's um, Queen Victoria, had uh, come to join us for lunch again, Chatham Kent. But the importance of this was not just the fact it was somebody from the local dramatic arts society coming along to tell us uh, what Queen Victoria did, but it was about their cultural heritage again, what the activities were within the community. So again, every opportunity is taken by the community to get across the messages. Now, we need to make sure that that uh, schedule is kept going. So it may be that you've got to adjust the stops to make sure you keep within time. Getting the judges back to their accommodation about four o'clock is a useful time because it gives us the opportunity then to start the preparation for the drafting of the report and the evaluation grid. Um, very important. But then that doesn't stop at that point. Usually there's an evening activity. Um, so it's going to pick up from the hotel uh, to take us somewhere. It could be, <laughs> could be in a, a little limousine like this one, um, but equally it could be a little buggy or whatever. It, what you're doing is you're getting us from one place to another. Because in the evening, it's a little bit of a time to relax in a way. And again, the opportunity for community members to talk to judges, explain what's going on. And I suppose impress upon us the value of communities in bloom to that community. 
uh, in this particular case, uh, I think that's being done to the full. Now, the following day, uh, if it's a one day judging tour, is the onward travel day. So it's a matter of getting from breakfast and again, another opportunity for your committee to talk to the judges and get a bit of feedback from what the judges' initial views are uh, of that tour. They're not going to tell you uh, what the results are. They're not going to tell you what your scoring grid is like. Uh, they're going to give you encouragement, uh, words of encouragement, and also suggesting that uh, of areas where improvement might be made and things that they've enjoyed. Um, many of the activities that we go on during our judging tour is very enjoyable. It's, um, from my point of view, what I try to do is make the experience for the community to be one of enjoyment, one that's going to be remembered, uh, and one that they're going to work from. Uh, it's not just to say, it's not a test, uh, it's there to, to learn, to share, and to encourage. And then from then, it's a matter of checking out and departing for onward journeys. Now, if you're a larger community, a large city, perhaps, you might run into a two-day two tour. Um, now, that's usually, say, for bigger sites, and there are more elements to be seen. It takes longer to get round, and therefore, judges would benefit from the extra day, and communities benefit from the fact of having a little bit of extra time to get the judges around to see what's going on. But what one has to be careful of is not to oversaturate judges. You can have too much of a good thing. Um, time is uh, vital to ensure that you are keeping on track and not swamping. Um, part of the whipper in job to make sure that it keeps going. But if there's too many things happening at once or you're seeing the same thing many times, uh, it's not going to help anybody. So what did uh, not work so well? I'm just saying that uh, important allocations of an over an hour in some instances on one particular project doesn't help. Uh, it's useful to see and uh, get in there and have a look but if you're going to spend over an hour, um, it needs to be something special. So be very conscious of that. Um, some communities have numerous population centers. As I say, avoid repetition. It's no good going to one center and seeing something and then going to the next center and seeing it again. Um, so you've got to be careful not to have that repetition because it's really wasted time. If you're going to go to the next centre, make sure it's something different uh, and also ensuring that you are picking up all the elements of the grid. Something else that can be an issue where time is running short and people try to do is stretch the afternoon session then into the evening. Doesn't help anybody. Everybody's under pressure. Um, and it means that the, the whipper in has not been doing the job properly and the tour is not being managed properly. So you have to be careful of that. And equally, if you're on a tour, and some instances it's inevitable that you end up running down the same road two, three or four times. Now, if that's got to happen, make sure it's a road that's going to be of interest and it's not looking with overgrown lots. Um, make sure that there is of interest, because if you're going to see the same uh, graffiti four times, it's not going to leave a good impression. But what did go well is when you have a community picnic in a park, as we saw a picture earlier where the communities are able to all come together and a lot of information can be imparted to the judges fairly quickly uh, and in an, an enjoyable setting. It could be an evening session like this one. Uh, with a music um, opportunity for the judges to meet different elements of the community and have a, an enjoyable evening too. Community showcasing organised by large numbers of active groups and agencies working in the area, but it doesn't have to be large. Here we have a small example of a small community 
and the kids getting involved and showing us what they get up to. In this case, it's kids activity with doing drawings. Um, it doesn't have to be large showcase events, making sure that you get the information across that things are happening in that community. So in conclusion, really what we're seeing is that uh, what the judges are looking for is how the communities are prepared and how they're showcasing the efforts of that wider community. The profile book that you will be producing anyway is a very good promotional tool. So use it, not just for the judges, but even for your home audience. Have place it in, the, in your local libraries, place it available in your community centers, make sure council members have copies of it. Uh, use it wherever you can. Now, judges have seen some outstanding things over the tours and over the years. I've seen some tremendous uh, examples of good community working, uh, but that's all down to your hard work. So it's well done and keep improving and keep sharing. Now, I hope the suggestions have been able to help you along that route, but we need to remember that the experience of the judging tour is, is about fun. It's not about being tested, as I said at the very beginning, it's about enjoying the time, sharing, sharing knowledge, sharing good practice and getting messages across. So on that note, I will say thank you very much and we'll open it up for questions. So I think it's back to Paul. That's great. I mean, thank you so much for that, Bob. You uh, walked us through a really fun, I think maybe number of years of judging from your end. And I think it really set, it should set people's mind at ease that the idea of this is to encourage communities to, to showcase who they are and, uh, and work with the judges to learn more about you know, the judges experience. So great way to put all that together. And, and thanks very much for you know, kind of walking us through and explaining the, the process. Thank you. Paul. So we are going to answer uh, questions now as they come up. So just to remind people as we come through, uh, if you hover your mouse over the bottom of the screen, uh, the question and answer section should uh, should come up and we'll see what we can do to answer questions. I, I do believe a couple came in in the background. And as we sort of wait for people to ask in, I know one of the uh, one question that came in earlier, Bob, if you give us one of your, there's probably many, but one of your favorite uh, memories from a judge's tour. Oh, goodness. That's a tough one. That is a tough one. Uh, I've been judging now for, I think I've done probably 10 tours, I think, over the years. Um, and each year you see something different. So it's difficult to say that's the best um, because all communities are different. Uh, they've all got different challenges that they're working with, be it financial, environmental, uh, community pressures generally. So it's difficult to say this one is the best. Um, what can I say? Um, I think the best, I, I put it generally, the best ones I've seen is where communities have been working together, both the, uh, the, the, the city itself or the municipality, the community, the business communities, the, the, the service groups uh, and individuals. And you see some very challenging um, situations, uh, high density residential where you have um, a small youth group operating uh, with youth workers, creating allotments and recreational spaces around the base of tower blocks. Uh, now that's, that's something that's quite special because they've been working with tremendous pressures, not just say environmental, but a lot of social pressures and to see them out there getting stuck in and enjoying working in the garden and producing things that they're then going to eat. Um, so that's, that's quite special. You can go to other places which have got uh, very plush, um, highly residential spaces. And you, again, you see individual experience coming through and the quality of the work that they're producing is unbelievable. 
Um, it's very difficult to say that's the best one because there's been so many different things that I've seen over the years. Oh, that's a great one. Thank you. Uh, next question that's come in is from Colleen McGregor, and she is asking, what is the, a good way to present events that happen in other seasons? And as examples, she's asking about, you know, if there's a winter carnival or a springtime shoreline cleanup, what's the, how would you, you as a judge like to see or have that presented to you? Sorry, could you repeat the question again, Paul? Sorry. Sure. So if there are events that happen in the community um, outside of the time you're judging, like such oh, as a, a winter carnival or a, a, like a springtime shoreline or waterfront cleanup. Yeah, uh, yes, I mean, obviously, uh, the um, time of year that the judges are visiting during the summertime, you're not going to be able to capture everything. So I think the thing to do is ensure, A, you could put it onto a video. Uh, and show the judges during one of the presentation sessions that they have. You could put it into the uh, your community book and, and show, just show the photographs. Um, but have someone present and that particular element to the judges um, could be virtually uh, as we're doing now. It doesn't have to be actually there on site. So if something's been happening outside of the judging time, make a record and then show the judges. And that record can be in all sorts of formats, but just make sure it's there and in front of the judges. Okay, that's great. Thank you for that. And I understand in the background here that you actually all pound into the swear jar for using the word profile book and not profile document. So we'll cover that for you today, Bob, but just for today. Oh, thank you very much, yes. <laughs> Uh, but what ideas would you recommend to encourage community appearance improvements in residential and commercial areas? What would I recommend they, they do to encourage people? Mm -hmm. I, I think in the first instance, it's getting people to understand that there can be an improvement. Uh, I think also showing by example. So if the committee is able to do some work within that locality, to show how improvements can happen. Get one of the residents to uh, actually take on board what's happening. So it gives them a practical example of what can be done. And it's like many things where you, where you have an in-bloom program operating. If one person does something, then the neighbor sees how, how that impacts on their community. And then the next one, and then the next one, and it will spread. Um, a little bit of a campaign in advance. Um, I don't know quite sure how you would do it over in Canada, perhaps, but leafleting um, in a, a, over the local radio, if you have that facility or even local TV, um, get the message out that this is going to happen, set a date and then start the program. Uh, and then it'd be amazing how people will actually latch on to that and it will then cascade out beyond that initial starting point. Fantastic, thanks for that. And I see uh, Lucy Chang had suggested as well on a pre on a pre judging day as back to our previous question, you know, in case of inclement weather, um, not just off season. Another another thing, if you get into a a poor weather day. Um, as you're preparing for the judges, do a video, uh, and with with our phone technology now, that's it doesn't have to be professionally done, but a video to take the judges through. We would have normally shown you this, but due to weather, we're, you know, we're going to shorten, change, or alter the tour. That's right. I think that's an excellent idea of, of Lucy's there. Is because bad weather will happen, um, hopefully not too often, but it will happen. So it's a matter of being prepared. And as I said very early on, is think about every eventuality uh, and be prepared to deal with it. And having a video and presenting that to the judges is an excellent way of going forward. Excellent. Got a great question here in the chat, Bob, and it is, what is one of the funniest or most unusual things or unexpected things, I would say, that it's happened to you during a tour? I, I could say, yeah, uh, trying to get me on a horseback, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah funniest things goodness me that that, that that's caught me um 
I don't know. I, cu I couldn't say what would be the funniest thing. I, I would like to think that the judging tours that, that I conduct, hopefully that it's, it's going to be fun and amusing. Hopefully people will think back and say, OK, uh, yes, they came. They, they came to assess what we were doing. But I also want them to be able to say, and that wasn't a bad couple of days. Um, we enjoyed that. Uh, so it's not so much what I think might be the funniest or the most amusing time. Uh, I would hope that uh, the community themselves would be able to think back and say, yeah, that wasn't a bad time. Uh, we'll invite them next year. Fantastic. See, David Solos uh, chatted in the background. He said, the judges arrived 10 days after the worst hurricane uh, to hit them happened in years. Uh, the hard work paid off in the preparation. A benefit of the program was it motivated the cleanup operation to get into high gear. So that- I, 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 I think that works. I'm not quite sure where David is from. I believe um, Roberts, Ontario. Okay. Well, I, I had the privilege of uh, judging Calgary uh, about, I think it was only about six months after they had their floods uh, a few years ago. And right. the tremendous work that was done by the community, and, and it, when I say the community, it was the whole community. It was the municipality, it was the businesses, it was the individuals within that community themselves, and how they had used the Communities in Blue program as really as a catalyst to bring people together and, and put right what went on. And the amount of work that actually was undertaken in that few months before the, you know, we arrived to judge uh, was tremendous. And I think that year, because of the amount of work and effort that had been done, I think we, we as judges on the, on the day, recommended a, a special award for them. So, um, we take account of what's gone on. Uh, if it happened to have been the hurricane, you know, uh, just before we arrive, we know, we understand that. And the, the assessment that's made takes that into account. And, but what we're looking for is how is the community going forward? Fantastic. All right, next question that's come in here. What do you enjoy most about doing the judging and why do you do it? We're always looking for more judges. <laughs> uh, I, I think judging is a tremendous way of learning. Uh, I said right at the beginning, it's about exchanging ideas, exchanging good practice. So I, I hope I'm able to take to communities that those good ideas and that good practice and share it with them. And equally, when I'm there doing the assessment of them, I'm picking up new ideas. Um, because there's always something new. You're always learning something. And I can then take that to the next community that I go and judge uh, and impart that information to them. Uh, so they will learn from the, what I've learned from the previous community. Uh, and so it's all about knowledge sharing uh, and sharing good practice. Fantastic. Um. So I just got a quick shout out to, to David. Sorry, David, uh, I, I had said accidentally Godrich. I was thinking of a, a local uh, tornado that had spun through here uh, a number of years ago. Uh, David's actually from Yarmouth and we were there for a judge, well, for the conference, I think two, two years ago now. And Yarmouth mm -hmm. certainly looked no worse for wear. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, city. And they sure rolled out the red carpet for us there. And that was one of my first uh, official community in bloom events so a small town yeah, I, mean, with a heart. I mean deal, dealing with adversity like that I, I mentioned calgary i i've also had the the privilege of going to uh, fort mcmurray uh wood buffalo and again they just had their fire uh, i think about 18 months before we judged uh they were very brave uh and put themselves forward to be uh, to be judged um and again, we took account of the fact that a tremendous, tremendous amount of work had been undertaken by the community in pulling that, uh, that city back round again. And you could see the potential, you could see how things were changing. 
and how Communities in Bloom program was actually assisting in, in that development. Um, and I, I think part of the, the, the Community in Bloom program itself, as I mentioned, does tend to act as a catalyst with communities, bringing them together and getting the best out of them and, and improving the environment for everybody. Fantastic. Well, Bob, I don't see any other questions coming in at this point. And I know when we put you on the spot about your funniest or silliest event, you probably want to filter for that one. So um, at this point in, the, in our chat, I do want to thank you very much. Again, you kind of walked us through uh, how to get there and, and some of the, the, you know, the ups and downs and expect the unexpected. So I think that's, that's a key piece um, for people to remember. And also that as the judges come through, I mean, that's the reason for judging to come through and help and share information. And like you, you mentioned, the judges are going to learn, I think, as much as, as they're going to give. So it definitely oh, a two way street. Absolutely. Yes, indeed. And if at the end of the day, say we can leave a community and they feel that they've learned from the experience, uh, then that's that's what we've been looking for. And Bob Lewis, just in the background, one of our board members has just mentioned as we uh, make sure your tour as, as you go through, cover the six different criteria areas and mm -hmm. also check the different sectors as we go through. So if you have a chance and you know you have a municipal sector, your businesses, your residential and your community involvement. So double check on those tours that if you, know, if you have that opportunity, show the judges the, the breadth of your community and the breadth of the involvement through all the different groups. So uh, Bob, thanks for that in the background, very much appreciated. And uh, Bob Iveson, again, thank you for all your help today. And thank you to all the communities that are participating today and all of our sponsors. Again, our sponsors make this possible. And uh, we're always looking to, to partner with people that you know want to grow and can share our same message and our, and our same ideas. So our next summer webinar, and that's our last one for the summer is coming through August and it's Thursday, August the 5th. That will be our Outstanding Achievement Awards and Contest. And uh, that one I think will be sort of well regarded and, and well uh, well attended by many different people. But there's a lot going on. And uh, I know in our communities right now, it's, it's that time of year where everyone's I think happily starting to be able to get outside and, and start to meet with friends and neighbors and colleagues. So, you know, take the time to enjoy the, the good weather and then really make sure that you get out there safely and help your community uh, continue on with Communities in Bloom. And if you're in other communities and you see Communities in Bloom events going on, please take pictures. Um, anyone that has a Hope is Growing t-shirt because you've got a garden signed up or you have one, send us pictures. Let us see what's going on. That's the way right now we're all managing to stay together. Um, video links and, and pictures would go a long way to just to let us know what you and your community are doing uh, to carry the message forward for Communities in Bloom as we look forward to hopefully next year being even stronger and better and getting us all back together again. So Bob, I'll leave the final word to you for this afternoon, but thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much, Paul. Um, I hope that uh, this, this session has refired up some communities uh, to participate and get involved. But I, I think also just to mention that it's worth saying that the judging doesn't necessarily just have to be on those two days that they're with your community. Passing of information can happen at any time. And I'm sure that uh, from a CIB point of view, anybody asking a question either before or after the visit uh, will be welcomed and we'll try and uh, deal with those queries and, that, and questions to help, help those communities in the future. Fantastic. Well. With, with that, I will uh, sign off for today, but thank you so much, everyone. We look forward to seeing you on August 5th. Uh, take care and enjoy your gardens. Bye. Thank you.